Hello everyone, welcome to Respectful Dave. Today we're going to analyze a game that was played by Magnus against Nodirbeck in the Superbet 2024 tournament that is going on lately. Let's go. So, with the white pieces we have Magnus, and with the black pieces we have Abdusatarov. As you can see below, down there in my screen. In your screen, sorry. Well, in my screen as well. Okay. Um, and they're playing in the Superbet Blitz Poland 2024 tournament that is happening recently very strong tournament magnus is playing of course abdu satarov is playing eddie guys is playing Wei yi is playing so many strong players magnus opened up with e4 occupying the center d5 queen takes d5 this is called the scandinavian defense and c3 queen d6 d4 occupying the center more and they take out their pieces like this magnus decides to attack abdu satarov's queen of course abdu satarov saw that should be two Reverting to castle, a6, attacking this knight. Oh, sorry. Attacking this knight. Knight a3. This is a pretty weird move, actually. Queen a uh, sorry, knight a3. Normally, you would like to keep your knights as close to the center as possible. For example, knight c3. But knight a3 is okay, because it's going to get ready to, to jump into the center again. And actually, the idea is that e5 is going to be this knight's, um, this knight's destination. So, bishop g4, knight c4, as, as, as planned. E6, castles, bishop e7, c3, reinforcing the center. Castles, h3, bishop h5, bishop f4, developing your pieces a little bit more. So finishing development, I should say. Knight d5, attacking the bishop, bishop moves back, and b5. Do you remember what I said about this knight? Now this knight looks like it's going to go to e5, but Magnus decides to go to d2. The reason, because of, or the reason why Magnus did that is... I think knight e5 is absolutely fine, if not probably the best move. But Magnus is saying, okay, we're going to keep some pieces over the board. Or this is what I think Magnus is saying. Magnus is saying, I'm going to keep some pieces over the board. I'm going to play knight e4 next move. And maybe c5 is going to be a very, very big weakness in the future. So bishop d6, knight e4. Now this knight on top of attacking this bishop. So if if you could, if we could get the bishop here with the white pieces, that would be great. The black took, knight takes. Now once again... This bishop, oh sorry, this bishop is being attacked. Abdus Satarov doesn't want to give up this bishop for this knight, so plays bishop g6, sorry. Queen d2, which actually it's it's going to be a fun, funny move in the future. You will see why. Queen d6, connecting these two rooks. a4, undermining this structure. Knight a5. Now, this knight a5 move is threatening a fork on b3. And Magnus decided to play queen d1. So you remember when I said queen d2 was a funny move? This is the reason why. So it looks like Magnus just wasted two tempies with the queen, going queen d2 and queen d1. But actually, it's not as bad because what Magnus is saying, well, maybe Magnus did blunder this and I'm, I'm just bluffing. But the reason why Magnus is not so sad or losing in this position is because black, in exchange of the queen loss, the move loss, this knight on a5 is not very close to the center. So black is not happy about that. Also, well, white is not happy about moving the queen twice either. So it's it kind of compensates. It's it's it balances out. B4 was played by Abdus Satarov putting some pressure on the C3 pawn. White white played C4. Magnus played C4. Knight F4. Rook E1. This rook is now a little bit more active than before. Little moves. Of course, chess is all about making little moves. Undermining once again, not this pawn like before, but this pawn on d4. So now there's some tension in the center. This is what we call pawn tension. Bishop f1. Now this bishop, it looks like it, this is a passive move. Why is, why, is, why is Magnus putting his pieces like that, David? Bishops, like queens and rooks, are long scope pieces, which means that even though it looks like they're far from the action, you should not underestimate that they can defend from far away or attack from far away. So, for instance, if you forget about this bishop and say la la la, then you're just going to lose a knight. Um, that's why bishops and long scope pieces in general are tricky. So, rook d8, um, putting some pressure in the d file. And Magnus finds a sequence of moves that promise him a slight advantage, starting with knight e4. Now, this is technically a fork, because these two pieces are attacked by the knight. So, black has to take... Rook takes, pawn takes, and instead of taking on d4, Magnus decides to improve this by playing g3. So, once again, what, black, what, what does black do? Black has to go back, and now Magnus takes on d4. 
Queen c7 was played, of course you're not going to blunder that. And Magnus plays c5. This is an annoying move from Black's perspective, because now you have to start worrying about this passed pawn. So rook takes d4 was played, queen takes d4, now this queen is now nice in the center. And Nodirbek finds a very good uh, orc. Knight b3. David, isn't this losing for white? It looks like it is, because this knight is attacking this queen, this rook, and the pawn. Let's not forget about the pawn. But now Magnus plays queen e4, saying, ha, you didn't get me just yet, because now this queen is attacking the rook. So for example, if black makes a mistake and takes this, we're just going to take the rook, knight f8, knight f8. It's not checkmate, but it's still losing, because you play something like c6. And I know that these arrows might seem a little bit confusing. Let, let me let me just correct that. You're going to play something like queen b7, c7, c8, and it's game over. So your pawn promotes, you win the game. Abdus Atarov didn't fall for that, of course. Abdus Atarov played rook b8. Now this is still happening. So this fork is still going on. But Magnus finds rook d1, activating the rook. Doesn't care about the pawn, and plays queen c4. Now this is an annoying pin, and you're going to say... David, when I'm down a pawn, I lose the position and I'm absolute rubbish. And when Magnus is down a pawn, he's the best player in the world. Why is that? Well, you have to take a look at this position. So, in this position, white, Magnus, is down a pawn. But the reason, or the reason why this is actually not that, that bad, is because of the other reasons I told you. So, some things are higher priority than other things. In this position, material is not such a high priority. The highest priority is... This bishop being pretty good. And activity. So this queen on c4, this rook on d, the on d1, sorry, occupying the d file. So it chess is more than material. Don't be materialistic. Take care of your pieces, make sure they're active. And Magnus in this case is pretty active. That's why this is at least okay for white. At least. Instead of queen b6 is a good find by Abdus Atarov. B3, this is what we call cementing the structure. So now um, this pawn is defended by another pawn. Uh, black played h6, just giving some 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 air. This is what we call opening a window, because now there are no back rank issues anymore. But um, in this position, after rook c1, which is what Magnus played, black played rook c8, queen d4. Once again, we have two pins actually in this position. This knight cannot move for two reasons. First, this is hanging, and second, this is hanging. So 94, something like that. So it's terrible, it's terrible for black. In, in well, it's terrible in a blitz game. Maybe it's fine objectively, but let's remind ourselves that this is a blitz tournament, and in this position, players were already running out of time a little bit. So much easier to play with the white pieces who are more active rather than with the black pieces who are a little bit passive. Black played a5, h4, trying to kick this knight out, now knight out, sorry, 97 and. The reason why white wanted to kick that knight out is now they get 95 without trading pieces, claiming that this knight is stronger than this knight. That's why they, they Magnus didn't want to trade it. Knight f5. Uh, there was some idea of 95. Maybe this was better to get to c3. But okay, Abdul Sator have played knight f5. Queen c4. Once again, this pin is still going on. Rook c7. Queen b5. Very annoying move. And in fact, it's such an annoying move that... Abdus Atarov already blundered in this position and played queen d6. Um, and the reason why this is this is already pretty difficult. It, I don't I wouldn't call it a blunder, but it would be it's already a difficult position for black because now white plays queen e8, and that's a very annoying move. Why is this an annoying move? Well, queen f8, which is normally the 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 way you react to these things. Um, sorry, queen f8 wouldn't work because now you take and you play rook takes c5. David, why is this so strong? Rook takes e5 and I, you just gave up a rook for a knight. Well, now, Orkland, we check. We take this rook, next move, and we are up a bishop. So, that was pretty good for white. That's why black has to play king h7. That's what happened in the game. But now knight takes f7. And it's not only that you lost the pawn. It's not only that you're not, you're, you're, my knight, or Magnus's knight, I should say, is attacking your queen. You're up to set her off. But on top of that, after queen d4, white plays h5, and now queen h8 is... Sorry. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Queen h8 is mate. And there's only one way to stop it, and that's a horrible move, g6. And you're going to say, David, this is horrible. 
it is horrible but look 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 at what's gonna happen white takes on g6 king takes now you can move this knight anywhere and it's gonna be check that's what we call a discovered check because you just discover the check 95 that's a discovered check in fact it's a discovered check and a double check because this knight is also checking the king black plays king f6 rookie one which is a mistake for some reason, but it looks absolutely fine to my eyes. Knight e4, knight g4, king g7, and in this position, players were playing very, very quickly because they're both running out of time. And Magnus just takes this pawn, and it's fine, it's still fine. And I, I don't want to spoil this, yeah? Black plays knight e takes g3, which is a mistake, but okay, everything's a mistake now because they're, they're running out of time. And now, knight e5, Magnus wants to play queen g6 stuff. And Magnus doesn't want to go through, like, any craziness. Magnus wants to make it as simple as possible. That's what you want to do when you're winning. And how do you know white is winning in this case? Well, white's king is more safe than black's king. Black's king is going to get checked a thousand times. And Magnus's king is not that close to checkmate. But, as I said, you have to watch out. Knight e5, getting ready queen g6 ideas. Knight takes f1. And in this position, white is absolutely winning with a move like queen g6, which is what actually Magnus played, king f8, and queen takes f5. You just take this knight, it's check. And if black plays something like king g8, you give this other check, very important, king f8, and then you just take this with a king. And it's fine. White is up a knight, black's king is in absolute danger. It's an absolute nightmare. Or black. Not for white. White is happy. But instead of that, white gives a check. So Magnus plays queen f6, thinking that after king g8, he can repeat the position with queen g6. So what is repeating the position? Repeating the position is going to this, and maybe Magnus was going to take the knight this time, so he just wanted to gain some time in the clock. So he just wanted to make some quick moves so he could gain a couple of seconds. But what he didn't see is that queen g6 is a big blunder. The reason why this is a big blunder is because now black plays rook g7, and oh oh, this queen, you would like to move the queen to e8, for example, but you are pinned. You cannot move the queen, because that would be illegal, your king is behind, and after this move, Magnus instantly resigned. And shook his head, horrible blunder. I've never, I haven't seen him blunder like this in a while. But it happens. It's, it happens more in Blitz. And yeah, it was a very exciting game. And that's the reason why Noderberg is such a tough opponent to beat. He just keeps fighting and fighting. He's such a resilient player. And all credit to him that managed to get from a position, horrible position like, like this one, where Queen H8 looks like it's just game over. Many people would resign in this position to, of course, playing Rook G7 and earning the tables immediately yeah thank you very much for watching i hope you learned something if you have any questions please let me know in the comments and you should check out my other videos they're instructive they're about chess and you can learn and you can laugh and i would be very happy thank you very much have a nice day